All right, well, hello everybody, and welcome to Home Survival. And so I wasn't sure how I wanted to film this video, and if I wanted to take you on a tour of my house, or if I wanted to get all this stuff together. And initially I was gonna do this in my backyard, so what I did is I gathered a whole bunch of things up, and I'm gonna talk about them today. And um, I was gonna do it in my backyard, but ironically, we're filming this video on the day where Hurricane slash Tropical Storm Etta is hitting Southwest Florida. So. We're in our garage today because we have a tropical storm outside at the moment. So I think it's actually pretty, uh, pretty fitting that we're talking about this stuff today. So the very first thing I want to talk about um, is the ability to, you know, cook food and boil water. And so what I've got here is I actually got my standard green Coleman camp stove. So if you've ever been camping as a kid or if you've been in the Boy Scouts, you've definitely used one of these things before. They basically last forever. If you've got one and it's not working so well anymore, it probably actually just needs to be cleaned out or they sell little kits where you can replace the burners. And so just like I've got this stove, one of the things that I have with this stove is I actually have you know, some propane canisters to actually go with this stove. So if you have one of these and you think, oh great, I've got one of these stoves, one of the things that you should do is try it out, make sure it still works and make sure you have enough fuel for it. Another thing that I have here is I actually have a small backpacking stove. And so this is called the MSR Pocket Rocket. And it actually hardly weighs anything, it only weighs a couple of ounces. Um, but it's a little backpacking stove. And so this is actually a butane stove and they hook onto these butane canisters. So this one's actually a little bit larger than I would use for backpacking, but I think it's actually really good to have around the home. And so this just screws on there like that. And then again, this again gives you the ability to boil water and cook your food. And so as far as making sure that you have you know, enough of either propane or butane, um, pretty much every time I go to the store and I actually see these, I'll actually just pick up one of each and I actually have a pretty good pile of them at home here. And so if I ever go camping, right, I always have these, I just grab them out of my supply and I use them for camping and I just replace them later. Um, other options for cooking food and boiling water is if you have a grill in your backyard, right? That is a great option just to make sure you always have an extra propane tank filled with propane ready to go for any kind of emergency so you have enough propane to actually last you a little while in case you need to. If you have a uh, backyard fire pit, right? Can you cook on that open fire, right? Well, that's one of the skills that, you know, it's actually a really handy thing to do. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I fell over, is actually having um, some cast iron cookware. And so cast iron cookware is really nice. Um, this stuff basically will last forever as long as you take care of it. Um, this one is actually from the Griswold Company made in Pennsylvania. And so they made cast iron cookware from uh, the mid 1800s to the mid 1900s. So this one is somewhere between um, 150 and 70 years old. I don't know the exact date on it. Um, but I bought this at, a, uh, at an antique store for about $5. And so I cleaned it up and I seasoned it and I actually use it all the time. And so um, if you get cast iron, it's nice because you could use it on top of your stove, you could use it in your oven, but you could also use it on your grill or even an open flame and you're not going to damage it. And so that's why actually having some cast iron cookware is actually really nice um, for being prepared for survival situations. So the next thing that I put out here is I actually just put a, uh, a can of black beans. And so when we talk about like stocking up on food and things like that, there's some crazy people that will tell you that you need to have one year or two years of supplies of food ready to go. And you know, this class really isn't about like the world ending and we're having to feed ourselves and all our neighbors for the next two years, right? It's really about taking care of ourselves and what we need to do as individuals or as a family you know, to survive like everyday emergencies. And here in Southwest Florida, right, the big thing that we're gonna have to deal with is, right, the hurricane. And so what I always recommend with buying food is actually look at what you normally eat every day, right? So we eat a lot of black beans, chickpeas, pinto beans, stuff like that, but canned goods. So every time I go to the grocery store, I buy a few extra of these canned goods that I eat, right? We also eat pasta and rice. So I buy some extra pasta and rice and so we're regularly eating those items and we're cycling them through, right? One of the crazy things when the pandemic started is Walmart was basically out of everything, right? People were buying up those 20 pound bags of dried beans and I was like, who is gonna use 20 pounds of dried beans? 
And so my recommendation on food is you probably should have about a month's worth of extra food, but it should be things that you regularly eat. And so you cycle that through. So when I buy new cans, I put them in the back and the old cans go to the front and I'm continuously cycling through and I'm building up that supply over time. And so I'll always have extra canned goods if I need it. I've always got extra pasta. I've always got extra rice. And these are things that I'm always going to eat anyway, so they're never going to expire. Right? One of the things that you know really bothers me about you know people stocking up on like crazy food supplies, like you know bags of dried beans, is a lot of that stuff is actually going to get thrown away. And it really bothers bothers me when I think about right you know the, all the labor that went into that, the water that went into it, the production that went into it, the energy that went into it, transporting it, shipping it, the money it. And so really it's just a lot of waste if you buy supplies and you don't use them. So buy things that you're actually going to use. The other thing I have, right, I've got some of these freeze-dried backpacking meals. And so I go camping a lot. And so one of the things I will continuously use these. So I always have a supply of these on hand as well. But if I go camping, I'll take some from the supply that I have and then I replace them at a later date. So these things will last you um, about five years if you keep them in a cool, dry place. So if you store them in your garage, they're actually gonna expire a lot faster than the expiration date if you keep them in a warm area. So that's another thing to keep, um, keep in mind about this kind of item. The last thing that I've got here on food is I actually have a can opener, right? Because if you have a power outage and you only have an electric can opener at your house, right? Do you have a mechanical can opener that can open all those canned goods that you bought? And while we're on the topic of cooking, right, another important item for your home is a fire extinguisher. And so you should have a fire extinguisher in your house, right, in your kitchen. You should have one out in your garage that you could use for your car or your garage. If you've got a backyard grill or anything like that, you should keep a fire extinguisher out there as well. So fire extinguishers like this, you know, about 15 to $20, so it's worth having, you know, four or five of them around your house. All right. So let's move on to having, you know, enough water for your family. So again, right, having about two weeks worth of water is actually a pretty good idea. Um, you know, this water doesn't last forever, so these, uh, these gallon jugs actually have about a one-year shelf life. And so, um, you know, I usually buy a few of these every year and over time they, you know, they do expire. Um, and so instead of actually wasting them, I'll actually put these like out in my garage and I can use them for, uh, you know, washing my hands or something in the garage or if I need some, you know, clean water for something like that. So like maybe not perfect for drinking, but you know, still useful otherwise. One of the things that I have noticed though is that these, uh, these like real flimsy plastic ones, if you keep them in the heat of your garage or the heat of your car, um, they actually can start to leak. And so that's an important thing to think about when storing um, water in this super cheap plastic. Um, a lot of people during hurricanes will go and they will buy the uh, single use plastic water bottles, right? So those like 16.9 ounce bottles. And um, I'm not a fan of those, right? Because if you know me, you know I teach a lot about sustainability. But the one thing that those things are good for is emergency situations. So I definitely don't want you using them on an everyday basis. But for a hurricane, if you buy a case of those, they're actually great if you take them and you put them in your freezer and you fill your freezer up with those water bottles. What you could do then is you could create, you know, essentially drinkable ice. And so that will fill up your freezer with ice. Your freezer will stay colder longer. And then as they melt, you could actually use them as drinking water. And so if you have extra ones and the one in your freezer are full, put them in your fridge and actually drop the temperature in your fridge. And that will keep the stuff in your fridge and your freezer from, uh, from expiring sooner than it would if the power were to go out. And if you have even some more stove, right, take them out of your fridge, out of your freezer, put them in coolers, right? And you can keep as many frozen ones on hand as you're preparing for like a major hurricane or something like that. Um, other really great solutions for water though is actually just buying um, one of these water jugs. So the, uh, the outside of this one's a little bit dirty. I clean it before I use it. But um, these are about $20. You can put seven and a half gallons of water in this jug. And um, so if you just have a couple of these on hand for your family and you've got a storm coming, you could fill it up and you will have plenty of water, right? So something like this is, you know, it's a really cost effective way of storing you know plenty of water for you and your family all right so 
the next thing on my list. Let's talk about power and light. So one of the things I actually have, I've got a handful of these battery packs. This one's actually a battery pack slash um, Bluetooth speaker. So you can play music on it, but I actually bought these because you can um, power any USB device with these. And so it actually has a pretty large battery in this one. And so um, I think these are actually a really cool, uh, really cool idea. Um, in addition to that, I actually have a lot of these smaller battery packs. So I showed you one of these in my everyday bag. So I keep one of these and an iPhone charger in my everyday bag. So any kind of devices that you could power with a USB, um, you know, these battery packs are actually really nice to have. Um, and obviously, you know, your battery power is not going to last forever if you have an extended power outage. And so one of the things I have here this is actually just a small solar panel. And so this solar panel is basically enough to just kind of keep my cell phone charged. It's not super efficient because it's really small, um, but it's actually pretty handy in an emergency situation. So in addition to that, right, I always keep uh, flashlight and spare batteries on hand. And if all else fails, just keeping a couple of candles on, your ha on hand at your house is also a really good idea. Um, but if you are using candles, right, make sure you're um, using them safely and responsibly. Don't go to sleep with candles burning. Don't put them anywhere near they're going to catch anything on fire. Um, whenever I use candles, I always just kind of put the candle on the center of my stove, right, which is already a spot that's designed for hot temperatures. Um, so if you're using candles, just make sure you're, uh, you know, being safe with them. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually just having a... Uh, Right, a nice toolkit for your house, right? So whatever tools you need to maintain, um, maintain your house, having a nice toolkit on hand is actually really important. And um, I actually chose the drill here to you know represent my toolkit because this actually is really important if you have to put up your hurricane shutters here in Florida. And so um, <clears throat> if you've never put up hurricane shutters before, one of the things I would always recommend is actually drag all that stuff out of your garage and practice it when it's not hurricane season. So you know how to do it and you know how all that stuff works and you know that you have what you need in the event a hurricane ever comes along. And so, um, if your house actually came with hurricane shutters, so mine did, it's actually gonna have, I don't wanna spill everything, it's gonna have a box, looks something like this, and then this box is gonna have all your, uh, all your hardware for your hurricane shutters. And so, <clears throat> Mine actually came with an instructional DVD. I didn't watch this, actually. The whole thing was on YouTube. Um, but when Hurricane Irma was coming, right, we had, uh, had never actually used the hurricane shutters before, so we had to kind of drag everything out and sort it all out in the driveway before we were able to figure out what went where. And so one of the things that you know, I really recommend is after, um, after a hurricane, and you take all that stuff out, sort them in piles, and then zip tie them together, and then label everything so you know which set of hurricane shutters goes with which window, and it's gonna be a lot easier the next time. Um, the other thing that comes in here, there's actually some cheap work gloves. I recommend something a little bit better than these, some nice leather ones, um, if you have them. Um, but work gloves are definitely important. Um, some other things that are in here, Right, it comes with all these uh, all these washers to secure them to your windows, and um, when it's not hurricane season, I would actually recommend going and buying an extra bag of these um, to make sure that you have enough and that you also have extras because when you're putting these on, sometimes they break, sometimes you drop them in the grass and you lose them. So you always want to make sure you have extra of these because if there is a hurricane out there, it is impossible to buy these. The other thing in here that I have extras of, I actually have an extra drill bit. I don't know if you can see it in the bag, but I have an extra drill bit that fits the, uh, the bolts that bolted to my house. And I actually have a couple of extra bolts uh, that go into the house. And I think I have, yeah, so these bolts that go into the house, they could actually strip out pretty easily. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but these strip out pretty easily. So again, you know, having extra of these is actually really important. Um, because when these do get stripped out, you can't use them anymore. And so having extra ones, again, is gonna be really important. So have your hurricane stuff ready to go before a hurricane is actually out there. 
the next thing that I want to talk about over here while we're on the topic of hurricanes is right the documentation for your home, your important documents for your family. Um, so in here, in this red bag, I have um, my home documents, my home insurance, our tax documents, birth certificates, wedding certificates, things like that. And I actually keep this um, locked up in a safe, uh, but in the event that there's an emergency and we actually have to leave, right, I just grab this bag and it's ready to go. And so that actually happened for us for Hurricane Irma. When we had to evacuate for Hurricane Irma, right, I had all these important documents in one place. I just grabbed this bag and I took it with us, ready to go. So we had all of our important documents for our home and our lives in one place. The other thing that I have here, I, I just have some, some basic cleaning solutions. So I have some bleach. You can use a lot of things for bleach. Um, I also have some Lysol. So, you know, just having some basic cleaning supplies on hand and some extra of that stuff as well. Um, I, I know uh, a few months ago it was almost impossible to buy things like bleach and Lysol. And so, um, you know, just having some extra stuff like this, extra soap, um, extra cleaning supplies on hand is... Um, it's actually really important to have that stuff. And again, just like with the canned goods, uh, the canned goods and um, your cleaning supplies, buying a little bit over time is actually gonna go a long way, right? You don't have to buy it all at once, right? So every time you go to the store, buy an extra one or two things and you're not gonna spend a ton of money and um, it's gonna build up over time. The next thing over here I want to point out, this is actually my, uh, my family's first aid kit, and I'm not going to tear up in the whole thing, but um, in here, right, I've actually got stuff for, you know, if you've got a sore throat, if you've got cough drops, I've got band-aids, I've got antiseptic cream, I've got cold medicine, I've got cough medicine. And so one of the things that uh, I thought about during the early days of the pandemic is that if, um, you know, if my family and, all, and I all got sick, right, there's three of us living in this house, you know, COVID lasts about three weeks. Um, if nobody had it serious enough to go to the hospital, but we were all sick, do I have enough medication, cold medicine and flu medicine to treat my entire family for three weeks, right? Three people for three weeks. And so, um, I stocked up on that, which was not something I had previously stocked up on. And so basically, um, you know, I've got a lot of different types of like cold medicines, stomach medicines, band-aids, and I keep the new ones in here. And so if we need something, we'll actually just take it out of here and then I'll put that in the cabinet and that'll be the one that we use for the family. Um, and I'll replace that with the new one. So again, I'm continuously replacing the things that we use and I've always got this bag and I know it's always ready to go. The nice thing about this bag is it is a backpack, so I just had an extra red backpack. And so, um, again, if we have to leave the house or anything like that, I can take this bag and I've got all our first aid supplies and our medicine and things like that ready to go. Again, if you know me, you know that I've got a lot of pets. And so um, with my family first aid kit, I actually have a first aid kit um, for my pets. And so in here, um, it's really just, you know, a lot of supplies and stuff that, you know, we've gotten from the vet. Um, I have three dogs and so we've had, you know, issues here and there with the dogs. And so I've got some extra like painkillers and stomach medications and stuff from the dogs. And you know, it's, you know, I've talked to the vets and all that. Um, one of the things I don't do as much anymore is, um, when I was younger, I used to go into the mountains a lot with my former dog, um, and we'd be gone for a couple of days. And I definitely don't recommend you treating your own pets. Definitely go to a vet, talk to your vet. Um, but this was actually a cool little book, and it talked about how to, uh, you know, treat your pet in an emergency situation. And so, you know, I thought, you know, well, if I'm, you know, two days from help, you know, I should know how to, you know, help take care of my dog. And so this was actually, uh, you know, a really cool book. So in addition to that, um, and things that I've gotten from the vet at the time. They actually do make, um, you know, pet, pet first aid kits. So I've got one of those in here as well. I've got some, you know, the other thing that the vet gave me, which they, the vet charged me for, um, is just a cleaning solution. So you could actually clean your pet's ears or your eyes or things like that um, with this solution. And so that's that's the basics of home survival. The other thing I threw down here is I actually just have you know a can of gasoline. So when I talked about vehicle survival, I talked about storing um, storing gasoline safely in your garage if you can. 
Um, so it's good to always have a little extra fuel on hand if you have a safe place to store it. Um, the other thing, and the last thing I'm going to put on here, is in a survival situation, you may be stuck in your house for days or weeks without power. How are you and your family going to keep entertained? And so I actually just threw a uh, Dungeons and Dragons starter kit in here. So again, if you know me, I'm a pretty big nerd. Um, but for $20, you can keep you and your family pretty entertained for a long time with something like this. And so, right, whether it's, whether it's books to read, cards to play, other board games, um, you know, keeping yourself mentally sane during a survival situation is really important. And so having stuff for you and your kids to do is also going to be really important. So um, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys learned anything. Um, and so in your own videos, I should say, I hope you guys learned something, not anything. Um, but anyways, in your own videos, um, what you guys need to do, um, obviously you don't have to do anything as extensive as I have, but you know, show us what you have in your home. And if you don't have these things in your home, that's fine. You don't have to go out and buy them. Talk about what you would like to do if you don't have these things in your home. All right, so I look forward to watching your videos. I hope you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.